What is up everybody? This is my car repair channel. Today we're going to be looking at a Nissan Versa Note SV. So this is going to be the first video of a series if you want to call it that. I'm going to be looking at uh, various engines here of different cars and just have an, a little idea that I had. So I probably have two audiences uh, watching my videos. One being the uh, petrol heads they call them where they pretty much know everything about a car left to right front to back driver passenger you name it uh, every inch of the vehicle they know and then the other audience probably looking at my videos is somebody who doesn't really have a clue they're just looking up uh, Nissan uh, Versa or some of the other cars that I've done like a Chevy Lumina uh, BMW 328 uh, Toyota 4Runner those different vehicles just looking up trying to figure out how to fix something so I figured I will just scan over the engine and pick out some important parts and just explain them to you so let's get started so I'm gonna be going from right to left driver to passenger and I apologize for the blurriness of some of the pictures I took them with my iPhone looking to maybe get a little upgrade but here is the uh, air intake tube so the air intake has a long passageway where you have all the air that goes in and I'll explain a little bit more uh, as we get along but you see those two little things that are sticking out the best explanation that I could think of was as you come to a stop or you're at an idle and air maybe flows backwards in this you might have some moisture that drops out and it'll end up in those two things. Here's the the battery, positive terminal on the left, red, and negative terminal on the right. Here's the coolant reservoir. Add your coolant there. Make sure you check in your manual for the proper coolant. Here's your radiator cap. On your radiator cap, it's basically, well, your radiator cap is a pressure uh, controlling mechanism. And it has the pressure right there. If you can see that, 8.8 .8 kilopascals. And it just regulates the pressure between uh, the coolant coming from the engine and into the coolant reservoir. It does that by a spring loaded mechanism there in the radiator cap and when the pressure gets too high it allows coolant to flow back into the reservoir. That's why some people call it an overflow tank. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is the engine control unit. They call it the ECU. You see it was right there behind the coolant reservoir. So this thing, I would call it the brains of the car. If you call the, the battery the heart of the car, I'd call the ECU the brains. And so it takes electrical impulses and uh, let me just uh, share an example, uh, share an example with you. So let's say you have air coming in through your, uh, over across your mass airflow sensor. You also have fuel coming in too. So this little unit takes all that information and creates a proper air to fuel mix ratio. So as far as I know, most cars are uh, at about 14.1 or 14.7 air to fuel. So it tells how much fuel to inject for how much air is passing the air mass airflow sensor. So that's just one unit operation that the uh, ECU controls. Also, it takes information from the oxygen sensors and tells if the system is running uh, fuel rich or fuel lean, meaning too much fuel or too less. And uh, also, when the car is idle, it slows down the, uh, the fuel input. So, we're going to be continuing on here. Um, I'm going to be putting some prices of some of these units, the ones that you can replace easily yourself, in the description. So here we have the air filter uh, housing or box inside. You open it up, just a couple clips. You don't really need any tools to change the air filter. That's typical for most vehicles. And here you have your brake fluid and your master cylinder. They're always going to be uh, right next to each other and just because of the way they work. The fluid drops down into the cylinder as you press the, the brake pedal. And as far as I know, I don't see any reason why any car would have the master brake cylinder not in front of the driver uh, driver side just because that's where the brake is and the mechanism that goes behind it so the uh, fluid drops down into the cylinder and you see those two uh, lines going off the left side of the cylinder 
they go all the way to the anti-lock brake system otherwise known as the ABS and uh, I have a picture of that what that looks like here later on later on in the video so um, you get to see what that looks like and next we have the fuse box that's gonna be typically usually located near the battery just because the battery has to go through the fuse box or the cables do from the uh, positive terminal the red one right there the cables have to go through the fuse box before they go to the unit that they're supplying electricity just because the fuse box acts as a uh, a protecting uh, layer and we are gonna continue on and you can see this is kind of a mess here it's kind of confusing um, it's the best picture I could get so we're gonna start with the mass airflow sensor right after the air filter you have a sensor that uh, tells you tells your engine control unit how much air is flowing by this is a real simple thing that you can fix yourself actually if it breaks or you can just clean it if you think it's just a little dirty I cleaned it in all three of my vehicles you can check those videos out here on my channel but it's real simple just take those couple screws off and pull it out and then spray off the sensor with the uh, mass airflow sensor cleaner you can get some of that stuff either on Amazon or at your local uh, auto parts store so after the mass airflow sensor you have this little box here it basically can act as a uh, relief uh, to house the air that's being uh, released through from the engine so when you come to a stop uh, or you slow down you come to an idle you speed up there's a lot of things happening in your engine your engine RPMs go up and down you have air moving in and out of the engine uh, in and out of the intake valves in and out of the pistons so you need some place for the, all this air to go when you are slowing down when there's a, a release of pressure so the best place to put all this air is back into the air intake just so you don't lose it uh, into the atmosphere and also it may be mixed with um, some gas or some uh, uh, possibly maybe some oil or or whatever else gets into the uh, into the uh, this this air here so it'll mix with the incoming air and go right into the throttle so you also can see here um, two little tubes coming off the throttle uh, body going into uh, the top of the air intake manifold there on the left these also act as uh, the best that I could information that I could find was uh, pressure regulation so your throttle body does uh, perform a pretty important function it just lets the the air come in and it is throttled meaning it has a percent open it's not always a hundred percent open it has some air restriction and that is controlled by your engine control unit and right here in the middle of all this mess we have the top of the spark plug electrode heads and also to just to add to the confusion we have this wiring harness it just makes it look like more of a mess than it actually is but it's just supplying the electricity to the uh, electrical components that need it so we're gonna continue on here to the front of the vehicle and down here we have the starter the starter when you turn the key uh, the uh, basically the circuit is complete and then the battery gives the uh, sends power to the alternator and then the alternator starts the uh, can starts the engine uh, or the al alternator starts rotating which uh, starts your camshaft crankshaft all that good stuff and start your engine so when you turn your key and you don't hear if you just hear a click probably means your starter's bad but if you hear it starting to uh, start up but it's hesitate hesitating to start up then it's probably your battery because your battery doesn't have enough power to actually uh, send enough voltage to your starter and we're just gonna move over to the left right here and we have the air intake manifold this basically distributes all the air e evenly uh, to the four different pistons that's why there's four different uh, passageways and here you have the engine oil dipstick reaching down into the crankcase shaft and next here we have the alternator or some people call it the generator and this supplies the battery with continuous uh, voltage just so the battery doesn't run out for all the electrical demands in your car and we're gonna go up here to the top left and here we have a housing for your blower motor this is the motor that blows all the air uh, into your car 
Then we have the anti-lock brake pump right here. Some people call it the anti-lock brake module or ABS system, anti-lock brake system. Anyways, it doesn't matter how you call it. Uh, you see that there is four uh, metal lines there on the top. This this holds your brake fluid, so they got to be metal. They got to be pressure regulated. So uh, these four on the top, they're all heading toward your four different uh, braking systems on your four different wheels, and then the two metal tubes coming out of the front. If you can see that, the one on the right's a little hidden. Those two are coming from the master brake cylinder, so that's being supplied from the the, the reservoir there. And here we have probably one of the only visible parts of the air conditioning system, the uh, high and low pressure ports. They on the cap they have an L for low and H for high, and this in the low pressure port that's where you add your uh, your AC Pro if you want to charge your system with AC Pro, or you uh, reconditioned your system and then you need to charge it with refrigerant. You put put it right there in your uh, in your low pressure port. So that about wraps it up here for this 2016 Nissan Versa. I got some footage of a couple other uh, cars that I've taken, uh, some video of the engine. Hopefully you guys can learn something. Uh, I'm learning a little something too. Go ahead and check out my video here where I put some Tecron in my Chevy Lumina and I uh, looked at the pistons and it came out pretty good. Uh, also I am working on a website. Go ahead and check that out. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So I uh, just want to thank you guys again for watching.